Hi, everyone. My name is Stacey Goldstein. I am the Assistant Director here for the Master's in Professional Accountancy Program. Some of you have already maybe spoken with me, um, chatted about the program. I am your main point of contact. Any questions that you need answered, I would be that person. And we have more events coming up, but you're really lucky that you're in this one here. Um, we're very fortunate to have our executive director, Jim Biod. He's also faculty, and he really is the heartbeat of this program. So I'm excited to see the presentation just like you are. So I'm going to go ahead and hand it off to Jim. Good morning, Stacy, and thank you. And Gerard, always a pleasure to get a chance to work with you this early in the morning. First of all, welcome. Welcome to our program. Well, it's titled Careers in Accountancy. Uh, with a byline crash course getting the most out of the fall recruiting season for a number of you you've done this in the past you did it a year ago maybe seeking an internship position now looking for the full-time opportunity but actually for the most of you this is your first time going through a fall recruiting season likely trying to get a full-time job and maybe should be considering internship positions and we're going to talk about some of those choices that you have available to you How are we feeling today? Let's just let's just kind of wake ourselves up a little bit and see how we are feeling today. Kan ook veel volwassenen voor de eerste keer terug naar kantoor. Ik wil niet. Allee, ga alle vriendjes terugzien. Luc, Rita, Mark. Ah, kijk, daar is Steve van de Akantino. Heb je uw brotels? Ja. Hier nog een koek. Ah wel, ah wel, ah wel. Dag Frank. Wat zeggen we dan? Dag leidinggevende. Dag leidinggevende. Hij is een beetje zenuwachtig. Ik ben eigenlijk ook een beetje zenuwachtig. Maar we gaan van alle toffe dingen doen vandaag. We gaan spreadsheets maken. We gaan vergaderen over de kwartaalcijfers. Ik moet trouwens ook weg, want wij hebben WO en de nieuwe thema kapitel uitgelegd. Ah, voilà. Zie. Zeg, wie heeft er zin in een lekker tasje koffie? Straks wel terug. Tot morgen. Tot morgen. Tot morgen. En hoe was het? Superleuk. Kijk, ik heb het vergaderrapport mogen uittypen. Amai, heb jij dat gemaakt? Ja. Steve heeft wel een ongelukje gehad. Kijk. En omdat je zo flink bent geweest, gaan we vanavond spaghetti eten en gaan we naar de afspraak kijken. Yes! En wie zijn de gasten? Mia Doornaak. Ah, oh, wel al. Well, hopefully, hopefully you're not feeling a little bit like Steve from accounting. You know what? Uh, all of you that are going through the recruiting process, I remember those days back in late 78, 1979, 1980. It really hasn't changed that much. That is the feeling of what it's like to be interviewed the feeling of getting an opportunity to serve in an organization, the feeling of getting rejected. We've all gone through that. We've all had that feeling like Steve through the recruiting process. It's just one of those things in life that you got to go through. And the encouragement that I have for you today is get ready. There's a lot of us that have gone through it. And we are not only just sympathetic, but we're there to support you through the process. A little bit about myself. That's me. And I've got some educational background stuff. Did some passing certification examinations. Pretty good in privacy and accounting, all that other stuff. Spent time in a couple of the you know, little noticed uh, accounting firms and law firms. And part of a number of professional associations. But here's something that you're not aware of. My new career is here. I'm at the University of California, San Diego. I get the best opportunity you can imagine to basically finish a lifetime of work efforts working with you guys, working with the great students of the University of California, San Diego. A couple of things I want to point out here. I've done a lot of recruiting in my day. The number is well over 10,000 students across the world. I've hired 
I've mentored, I've promoted, made a lot of people partners, made a lot of people a lot richer than me because they've taken my advice and gone different directions. And on occasions, I've had to let people go. I want to share with you something that hey, it's not all about me. It's about you. This group of people, this guy here, this was posted about 72 hours ago, and I've got 10,000 views on this already. The interest is in, in Jim. The interest is in the students of the University of California, San Diego. I'm going to be sharing with you information today of things that you need to know, but maybe not necessarily want to hear. But before I begin this, I want to make sure I'm planting a seed. And that seed is this. I've been on this campus for three years. I can share with you unequivocally, you are some of the most talented students in the world. You're highly diverse, incredibly smart, hardworking, resilient, but you're also, in many cases, first generation students. Families that parents may not have gone to university. You don't know all the, the various paths that are out there, the directions that you can go into. And, and that makes some of this, what's gonna happen over the next couple of weeks, a bit more challenging than you probably prefer. But it's those opportunities where you really grow. Okay, who am I? I'm you guys, I'm just Jim. I know what it's like to go through the interview process. Got four children, three of which studied accounting. I know what they went through in the interviewing process. So we are connected. It's a first generation guy with a lot more browner hair and thicker hair than I have today, but that is who I am. My journey, lived in a number of different places from Cleveland, Ohio, Miami, Des Moines, Detroit, Warsaw, South Africa, and today at San Diego. My last assignment is I ran Sub-Saharan Africa for the, both the tax and law practices of ENY. I had quite a bit of terrain to cover on the continent. And here's where I'm at today. On a day-to-day -day basis, you can catch me in uh, the West Wing on the third floor, room 103. We're going to cover a couple of topics today. And for a lot of you, this is going to be the first time you've heard it articulated in the way I'm going to today. But it's important because COVID accelerated changes particularly with the largest, the global uh, accounting firms, and specifically the big four firms. So we're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about the process, positions posted and qualifications. Most importantly, don't overreact and continue the learning process. The last item, I'm going to ask Stacy to really help me out on this, is we're going to share with you some alternatives to consider for those who haven't. Do you really bypass a full-time opportunity today and look seriously for internship opportunities coupled with a graduate school experience? The challenge today is getting a position with a big four county firm where recruiting has become, I want to say it, virtually virtual. The solution is you've got to learn how to navigate these new relationship models that are still being built out today. There is a lot of confusion in the system, and it's not going to make your life easier coming out of COVID, putting on a face mask, using technology to connect and engage. Not an easy task. If you're looking for the easy out, this is the wrong webinar to be part of. This is going to be what you need to hear, not what you want to hear. We've got some drivers to the change, particularly at UCSD. UCSD has never been a priority relationship of the big four firms. Never do they come here and get some of our people. Of course they do. If you go out to LinkedIn and you do a search of the big four firms and you're able to filter out UCSD, UCSD, Rady, and accounting, you will find hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of graduates of UCSD and the Rady School of Management in the accounting profession. Why haven't they? We didn't have an accounting program a decade ago. We're still new on the block, and they're starting to realize the strength of our program relative or with or combined with the strength and talents of our student body. 
Firms are looking at finding talent at schools they've never recruited in the past. That's another drive. Right now, they've been basically going to priority schools, certain select schools around the country. How do I know? I ran it in the Midwest region. I had relationships with Notre Dame, University of Illinois, Michigan State University. I knew the programs. I knew the deans. I knew the professors at those schools. But here's what's going on. We think the changes that are taking place across the country are actually positive for UCSD. And I'm going to share with you why shortly. Technology has allowed them to make this change. New relationship models. They really are jumping all over what's called gig. You've heard of musicians that do a gig assignment, come out and just jam. A lot of people, at least we're told, want to work at a number of different locations and gig is their preferred relationship model and the accounting firms are listening. The last item, it's probably the more serious one, is the firms are trying to squeeze out unintended biases in their hiring. They're in the search for those students that are underrepresented in the business world today, and particularly in the large accounting firms. Well, if you keep on going to the same schools over and over with the people that graduated from that school over and over, you're gonna end up pretty much with the same students again. What they're trying to do through their model change basically is go directly to find identified talent out there in the marketplace that otherwise, under the previous models, would not have been discovered. So we've hit a tipping point. Old model, what's out? On-campus interviews by the big four firms, not happening, not happening anymore. The campus recruiting model is also changing. I would say two changes are occurring. We're not getting the immediate guides for our students on to the profession. We're getting a different type of engagement. Some with many of the most senior partners in these organizations engaging with our students directly. In the past week alone, we've had leadership from several of the big four firms, not just local partners, but partners out of Beijing, partners out of New York, partners out of Seattle. We've had some serious talent come to this campus. And it's not because of Jim, it's because of you, the students. So that model's changing, but it's being elevated. And that's a positive if you understand the reasons why. All right, here's your challenge. You gotta get recognized for your capabilities. Potential matters more than your accomplishments in the past. The next step forward, if you look at this climb, is a lot more important than where you came from. That coming from what you've done in high school, what you've done in your early experiences in college, that got you to this point. But where you're going is much more important today. Likeability. Actually, it's not just jovial likeability, it's authenticity. Dear colleagues, I'm looking at the number of screens right now and I don't see any faces. I don't know, man. That's not a sign of anything that would suggest you have one of the key qualities that these firms are looking for in likability. They want to see the eyes. They want to see the smiles, particularly when you don't have a mask on. They want to start seeing your personality, likability. Growth mindset. You saw my background. Undergrad degree is not where it ended. It went through a lot of different changes and formations over a 40 year lifetime, a career lifetime. Law, masters, finance, accountancy, certifications. All of those things matter when you've chosen to go into professional practice. The next item is you have to prove you have skills in engagement particularly tough with technologies glued to your head and COVID. I walk the campus, dear colleagues. People are sitting there grinding on their phones, their iPhones, they're listening to music, got shades on, looking straight down. It's not going to get you into the profession. And if you do get in the profession, it's going to be hard to sustain, sustain if you are not authentic and I can't connect with you. So they're looking for that ability. They are looking for a technology mindset the comfort of using tools, and UCSD is loaded with this skill set. Got some of the smartest students in mathematics, computer science, 
data sciences, we kick in that area. International mindset. I get to walk into these delightful classrooms where English is the second language of at least half of our students. For those of you who are not international, you're getting it. Only if, only when you engage with your colleagues from other schools. For those students that are from overseas, you have the potential to get it, but only works when you're engaging with your colleagues that are domestic students. See too much of not enough exchange in that particular area, but you have the opportunity here at this campus. Navigating the climb itself, the application process, virtuality and use of AI. Yeah, they're using AI. They get, these firms get over 2 million applications per year around the world. Not all four of them, 2 million per firm. There's not enough talent on the planet to rifle through three, you know, 2 million pre, uh, applications per firm. So they are using machine learning. They are using AI to sift through and look for those markers that would suggest all of the above, all of the above are applicable to you in your instance. Okay, what makes you special? And understand me, when I say you are special, you have the potential to be incredibly special. You attend, and you're aware of this, an elite school. We received over 100,000 applications last year. We have some of the top SAT, ACT, GPAs, class rank. You are elite on paper. We're the number eight public university in the United States. We're the top 25 of global universities. We are truly, truly a research institution. There are not many schools in, well, I was going to say across the country, but around the world, they have a supercomputer pretty much next door to a coffee shop. We're the top university created since WW2, World War II. Radio School of Management, whether you choose accountancy, finance, data analytics, or the MBA program, all four of the major threads are STEM programmed. We have incredible research and teaching faculty. And as a personal note, super young, super talented, asking great questions. The impact program, which Stacy is critical to its success, is in year two or year three. We're celebrating by welcoming close to 70 students to our campus this fall. In spite of COVID, our student career placement rates are off the charts. And I'll share with you a little bit behind the scenes what we're seeing going on at the grad level. What makes you special continued? Look at this. We are one of the top, well, in, in the US of public universities, of, the, of all the universities, we're in the top 10 of being socially mobile universities. That is helping students rise from one sphere to the next. When we talk about first generation, we're talking about students whose parents actually may not have come from or only one generation away from being overseas. That's what they're looking for, social mobility. We are one of the top universities in the country. Why is that important to me as a buyer of talent? Why is it important to you? It indicates, it's an indicator of resiliency. Students that are socially mobile have a growth mindset. They've got a skill set and an innovation tool to make things that would not normally work, still work. Those of you who don't come from a lot of money, if you're trying to stretch out that last minute measure of usage of anything, believe me, you have that skill set that they're looking for because you're gonna innovate a solution. This is another item that makes you special. We're gonna shift over to the process and get ready for the stuff. It's confusing. This is the PwC campus recruiting website as of last night, about 10 o'clock p.m. You're looking at it, it looks nice. But read here. Step one, search your school's deadline on the campus recruiting map. It's due by Tuesday, September 21st at 11.59 p.m. Well, that sounds pretty specific to me. 
except you have an asterisk, PwC reserves the right to accept applications after the deadline. So do you apply? Do you not? Do you know which one to apply? Was it carried over purposely or just a mistake? Then you look at step number three, submit your application by Tuesday, February 23rd, 2021. I don't know about you, but unless you have the ability to snap your fingers, go back in time, it's going to be really hard to do step number three as I'm reading their live website as of a few hours ago. What I'm getting at is this. The timelines are confusing. These organizations have almost on a global basis, they're beginning to exceed 275,000 to over 300,000 employees. They are in search of talent every single day, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, and they can't keep up with the website changes and the job applications open. So here's tip number one, do your applications. We'll talk about making sure you do it right, but if you get a rejection, read the letter carefully, because they're not, yeah, let me say it this way, they're not stupid. They make mistakes. So if you do get rejected, most likely it'll be great looking resume, good background, you're on the right track, but it's not the right time. And then you look at their help wanted, you'll see about 36,000 more job openings. So they're always looking for talent. Don't let yourself get too bent if you get that resignation. Do get it started, do get going on this, but don't get too bent out of shape if you do get a rejection. Here's EY. Step one, look for a position. Step two, get a game to play. Step number three, you're going to go through a pre-recorded interview, AI. And then lastly, you're going to go through an interview process with final ones being live, typically via video. Now, you've seen all the nice, fancy pictures of recruiting and how everybody's shaking hands and getting to know each other. I'm not sure exactly when the human beings get truly involved here. Uh, you get an offer, but I don't know if you'll have met anybody physically at that stage. This is the shift that has taken place. I'm certain the firm will figure out ways of getting its students on and in their offices or with their talent before you make a decision to accept or reject an offer. I'm positive about it. But this is what I'm going to send you on a PDF in a few minutes. You can look at what I'm looking at. It's confusing to me. Positions posted in qualifications. Guys, the process you don't control. The process you got to react. The positions posted in qualifications especially for really smart students at UCSD, they expect you to read the stuff. Really read it closely. They will not reward you for doing an application for the wrong opportunity. They'll just get thrown out. They will not come back and say, looking at the resume, there's a better fit over here. That's your job. So you really have to sit down. You really have to understand what in the world you're applying for. The real shame, and we see this often, students that are eminently qualified for these firms, eminently qualified for positions in that city or location, simply file the wrong application. And there simply is no bonus points awarded to you. File the wrong application, you're gonna be tossed. You're probably gonna be tossed. So uh, get ready and I'll share you some stories. Example, position PwC, summer of 2021, internal firm services available for work sponsorship. Those of you who are international students are picking up on this and going, sponsorship, I'm all over this. I want to do this. Travel doesn't look super bad. Then you read the fine print. They're looking for a certain type of student that has the desire not to be in audit tax or consulting, but to actually be a server of the talent within the organization. Now, these are good jobs. They pay good money, pay a lot of money, 
but it may not be the job you want. You may have jumped all over this. It's the only application you get to do with PwC, PwC Los Angeles, and you get an offer to join them. You walk in the door with your suit and tie on, you're ready to go out and serve big clients, and they introduce you to a desk and a computer, and you're working on PW's internal stuff. Wrong application. But you saw things that you jumped all over and said, oh, this is great. They'll sponsor me. I need sponsorship. I'm, I'm all over this. Not a bad opportunity. Not suggesting it's a bad opportunity, but it's definitely not what you're thinking about, possibly. Are you applying again for the correct opportunity? This one is looking for something interesting. Minimum years of experiences, zero. Degree preferred, preferred degree, uh, preferred qualifications, bachelor degree. But read through the requirements. Must be an underrepresented racial or ethnic minority in professional services field. If you're Caucasian and you apply for this, it's the only application you file at PwC for this position, you're tossed. They don't come back and say, well, yeah, you, you realize you're not an underrepresented student, right? No, they don't do that. You simply tossed. You applied for the wrong place. You missed 50 opportunities because you didn't read through the opportunities that are present in this. Notice what they're also doing here. Preferred degree, 3.3 GPA. And then they're also looking for commitment to the CPA examination where a lot of students make a major mistake is they don't understand the importance of commitment to the CPA. It'll come out in the interview. So when are you planning on sitting for the CPA? Um, what is the CPA? Toss. Um, you try to fake it. Uh, oh yeah, it's the certification of professional societies of advanced accountants. Yeah, toss, you didn't know it was you know, certified public accountant. Um, there's a certification exam? Yeah, you're going to be tossed. I, 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 how many parts to this exam? How many days is this exam? Those are the questions that are going to get you tossed. You really don't understand what the CPA exam is. So unless you're kind of a junior member of the Cal CPA or you're hanging out with other accountants like in Beta Alpha Psi, you're going to get tossed on a simple question by being ill-prepared signing off on something, I, yeah, I'm committed to the CPA, even though I don't exactly know what it is. I think this is the last one on here is short notice. They have here, no visa, minimum GPA, 150 CPA hours. So it's a brand new opportunity that just came up at EY San Diego. These opportunities come up. You may miss your window in the fall, but we saw last year a number of openings occur in January, in March. And this one came, I believe, in June, pretty much, looking for immediate talent coming off of campus. Takeaway from Jim. The large firms are basically beginning. They won't say it anything in the websites, but the cycle of hiring is almost becoming 12 months a year. They're looking for talent all the time. With COVID and the acceleration of, of job movements right now taking place across the United States, we're seeing more and more of this take place. So you want to be aware of that. All right. Don't overreact. You get a rejection letter. They don't describe why. You don't know if you applied in the wrong city, the wrong practice area, wrong background. You have no idea. You don't know if you can cure it with an investment in a graduate degree program. You don't know if it was chemistry or fit. You don't know if it's correct, uh, a corrective effort. You don't know if it's because of need of sponsorship, your graduation program for underrepresented students. They don't explain it to you. So you've got to do a couple of things. You got to learn. And if you're reading just solely the website, yeah, you're going to crash. Look at what Branson said. If you follow the rules, you learn by doing and fall, fa falling all over. The best advice that I have you is this. Look at other programs and learn from them. I'm going to give you a quick snapshot of a really good school. It's an impact program I truly respect. Another school. 
solid school. Notice of their undergrad population, eight of their students went to Deloitte, seven went to PwC, five went to, I'm sorry, EY, five to PwC, three to KPMG. Look at with a one-year investment, how that number turns up and almost triples. EY bumps from seven to 34. Deloitte goes from eight to 33. Basically, at this school, nobody is leaving early. They're going for the fifth year. They're going to the grad school to get into the profession. How does your school compare to them? There's this 33,000 student campus. Yours is 40,000. They're a top 80 school. You're a top 34 and top 10 public. Their acceptance rate is 57. Yours is 31% and going down. Highly competitive program. But look what they've done. Look what both the employers and students did. They feel the value of that extra year of study just helps you get ready for the profession. And you can see the results and the numbers. That's a decision by both student and employer. So you got to take a look at what's going out there. Here's what we're seeing on campus. Engagement with employers are continuing to grow. We see a trend in hiring that is opening to all year. Yeah, there's opportunities in this business. Internationally, PwC, one of our closest friends, Christine Kui out of Chicago, spends a lot of time with us looking for talent that's heading back to China. Uh, this is me and some of our colleagues uh, visiting two Christmases ago in Shanghai. The last item I'll point out on this, really it's all about timing. RSM is really clear on this. You gotta make a decision. And many of you are making that decision today. Do you go out early or do you wait an extra year for grad school? That's, that's your question. If you go out early and you get a job, that's a good deal. You still gotta do your 150 hours because all we offer is a minor in accountancy. So you got to do your hours on the side while you're going to school and studying for the CPA exam, where you basically spend an extra year in college, whether it's at UCSD or another university. And we're almost done on this. Everybody knows who this lady is, right? She's a goat, greatest of all time. To do what she does, there's a series of complex foundations that have been put into place. She is strong. Physically, she has it, it just every, every talent you need to play at this level. But it begins here. Children. It's the little things, a lot of little things that matter. KPMG, and I'll put this into the chat shortly, has this wonderful self-assessment focused on branding you, the individual. They're looking for students that have a global perspective. We'll talk about what that means. Well, I'll talk about it right now. Do you have a passport? If you get asked, do you have a passport? And you say no, you're not getting into KPMG. If you say yes, and it's not stamped, or it has one stamp to Mexico, one stamp to Canada, yeah, that's probably not global perspective. Now, if you're a domestic student looking for that opportunity, you want to show that you've got a global mindset, be able to illustrate the activities on this campus with your colleagues from overseas. If you don't have a best friend that's coming from another part of the world, it's going to be really hard to prove that. They're looking for leadership, teamwork, communication, adaptability, problem solving, academic achievement. And like I said, you guys all got academic achievement. But you know what? I see a lot of resumes here on this campus. I'm not at all impressed with our campus and community involvement. Not at all. I, I, I think we have some students that are heavily involved in outside activities, but we're kind of weak as a whole on that. So um, not seeing much there in work experience. If you have no prior work experience and you expect to get a full-time job with a big four firm, likely not happening. It's just really hard to convince them that you've gone from an academic world to a real work world without having work. Now, whether it's in retail, service industry, working at hotels, cleaning, those are work experiences that really do matter to them, but internships really matter. This September, September of 2022, 75 to 80%, if not more, 
of the big four firms, full-time hires will have been interns from the summer of 2022. I'll say it one more time. The vast majority of permanent hires for entrance into the profession for the big four firms are coming out of their internship slot, not fall recruiting. Where do we do well? We kick tail on academically uh, gifted students. I think we're strong in terms of adaptability or resilience. I think, and it's illustrated on this video chat right now with the lack of faces engagement, we are terrible at communication skills. And it's real important that you understand it's not because of ESL. It's not ESL. It just simply is an unwillingness to engage. Campus community can be a lot better. Joining organizations like Beta Alpha Psi, a hundred year old honorary, surely indicates that you have an interest in the profession of accountancy and leadership services. Again, you'll see the types of questions that are gonna be asked of you, not directly, but indirectly through the interviewing process. The last item, your wake up call. This is where I bring in Stacy. Again, 70%, if not more, of the full-time offers big, of big four firms are through internships. So if you're a rising sophomore, junior, and especially seniors, especially seniors, do take a look at your circumstances. If you're truly not competitive, and Stacy and our team over at Rady can help you out through that question, or you can give it a chance through the interviewing process, do consider looking at that fifth year, getting that investment done, and getting your way into the profession. What have we seen in the impact class? A lot of hires into a lot of good firms. Even these numbers aren't where I want it to be. They're not where that slide I shared with you earlier. We're about 30, 35% of our students are getting into the big four firms, but you can look at the secondaries that they're getting into, into it, RSM, uh, Grant Thornton. It's just some really good firms. I mean, these are great firms. And we're starting to see, see a rise of what we call our boutiques. This one over here, uh, let's see, where is it at? Um, uh, Leo Berwick is a bunch of former partners out of KPMG just doing M&A. And they sponsored one of our students from Asia uh, this past year. And so tremendous opportunity to work for former partners from KPMG. That's your day-to-day -day job. You're going to grow in that kind of firm. I'm going to skip through this, but Beta Alpha Psi is a great way to develop some relationships. We're already growing. We're already, well, basically bigger than everybody but UC Irvine. So if you want an opportunity to get something cool on your resume and be part of something that's growing and to be able to put on your resume something about leadership, definitely track down the folks that are running this organization. In the last one, if you can imagine this, you got a good resume from UCSD, a program that's a minor in accountancy. If you bolt this on, your resume looks a whole lot better. You have these opportunities to study with this internal controls class being taught by a former partner of PwC, advanced auditing and forensics being taught by a former partner of PwC. Tax one over here is being taught by a former partner of EY. And I think that is what we want to do today. Our students, by the way, will be learning AI and machine learning and how to understand it better building models using Python. Oh, last one, communication. Go to the Rady website. If you wanna see your competition, they're right here on campus. If you wanna see the people you compete with, go listen to them. The last two years of MPAC students have done global webinars, broadcast across the world. Their parents in Beijing can listen to it while their parents over in Frankfurt, Germany can listen at the same time. This is communication skills. So if you really wanna get an idea when I talk about, we have to enhance and improve our communication skills. These young colleagues that are in the business right now looking for you, go listen to them from what they were doing a year ago. And these are some of the topics that they're taking on from crypto, the blockchain, use of AI and automation, m and digital transformation. Stacy is here. She can take you through the last thing, but I want to just share with you this. You got to learn how to do the math. There's a lot of money involved in this profession. Stacy, I'm all done. And uh, why don't you share a few words and uh, we'll open up for questions.
great. Thank you, Jim. That was wonderful. Um, there we are. All right. So, again, you heard it here. Appreciate the honesty. That's what we do. We're very transparent with our students. We want to set you up for success. It is a demanding program, and this is why it's important to prepare you and give you the proper expectations. So we start the process early. First step, you need to apply. Number one, oh, the deadline's not until April for the international deadline, or oh, I have until June. Do not wait. As you just heard from Jim, the big four, they're always looking, but you need to really practice. You need to work on yourself and get those skills on how to do interviews in a virtual and in-person environment. We start our services very early. So the sooner you apply, the sooner you have access to our resources. For example, our students, they meet it in, so October 15th is the first application deadline. The second is November 15th. I would say the majority of our students that had internships and then received a full-time offer already were accepted by January 15th deadline of the application deadline. So the sooner you apply, the sooner you can be introduced to our careers team. But first, you need to apply. And we will be going over application tips on October 12th. Um, I will be holding another a little event like this where we can how to prepare your application and what you need to know. But my best advice is to get it done early. Do not wait because the sooner you are admitted, the sooner you can start working with us. That's almost a year early. And then you feel confident and prepared going into our program. 90%, I believe, of our students, Jim, receive full-time offers before even starting our program. This is because we prepared, we worked with them, we made sure the resume was great, we practiced the interviewing. It's tough right now. You have to learn two different things. You have to learn how to work in a virtual environment and in person. Just so you know, we are in person right now. Our students are in classes. They don't technically have class today, but they are all in person. You will also be in person. That is the plan. Um, you never know with the world, but that is the plan. So prepare for that but you still need to know this environment as well on how to interview virtually. So I'm going to go ahead and, Jim, did I miss anything? Nope, right now you've got a little bit of frozen face, so let me cover you for a minute. Uh, a couple of things. Stacy is absolutely right. If you have questions about what the opportunities are, go, go visit with Stacy. If you have questions about what a program looks like, and by the way, we're not selling UCSD graduate school. Yeah, we are, but not really. Uh, we're selling the concept of you're incredibly smart students, incredibly smart students. But when you have a student who is, whose highest accomplishment in school is a minor in accountancy, competing with somebody who's got a major in accountancy, you're already at a slight disadvantage. When you're competing against a student that's got a master in accountancy, you've lost. You just, the hiring person just not gonna lean that direction unless relationship is involved. The difficulty with the big four firms now is they don't, they want to cut out some of that element of, of engagement, that physical engagement. So now it's going to be what you do on your resume truly matters, what you're saying to the world you're really doing and getting it done. That stuff is really going to be mattering on a go forward basis, those accomplishments. So you got to actually compete where you actually are in the best situation. You've got the grades, you've got the accomplishments, you're at an elite university. So you're already gonna pop up there, it simply is finishing it. And the weaknesses, they're all manageable, they're all fixable, they're all developable. It, 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 we could, I'm an introvert, but introverts can learn to be extroverts. We can teach you how to do that. Introverts by natural, I'm, not, I'm a shyest kind of person, but it doesn't seem like that because I've worked really hard on improving that part of me. We can teach you that part of it, but we can't teach hard work. You already got it. We can't teach you to become smarter. You're already doing it. It just simply is we can teach you how to become more competitive. But what I do want you to do is I do want you to go and get these applications started. Don't worry about a rejection. Please don't worry about it. Use it as a learning moment. If you can engage with them, do so. If you can engage with us and say, hey, I got rejected. Let me show you the app, my application. Let me show you what I did. Can you help me out? And we can help you out on that stuff. Your peers can help you out. Colleagues in organizations like Beta Alpha Psi can help you out. 
um, in obviously your faculty and, and, and the folks over at Rady can help you out too. So all we're trying to do is, is let you know what we see going on. We think we have some of the most talented students in the U.S. We just want to make sure that you have every shot of making it into the profession. Let's open it up at this point in time, Gerard. Does anybody have any questions? Feel free to come off of mute. You can ask anything. Uh, it will pretty much tell you everything you want to hear and then some. Let me ask, does anybody like know what a starting salary is for an accountant in, in San Diego? Anybody know? Hey, Bryce, what do you think? What's a ballpark that you think it might be? I think it'd be probably 80,000 per little, year. Little less, little less, about 67,000. But then you've got bonus opportunities. But I'd say 67, and I want to come back to that. What we see as you move up the coastline to the Bay Area, it, it, it jacks up considerably. You're looking at 70 to 73, sometimes a little bit of a thousand, two thousand dollar bonus to help you facilitate a move and move into that marketplace. The, the better question is two things. What's the investment that they make in you? Do you believe your education, what you paid for versus their development, what they're going to pay for to help you become, I'll call it productive within their organization. Which one do you think costs more money, yours or theirs? Nancy, what do you think? What's your gut? Yep. Oh, come off a of mute. Come off a of mute. That's okay. I think they. I think it costs more for them to yeah. um, have some resources to train us. It does. It costs I, multiples more. And Nancy, with that smile on those eyes. One of the things that you're going to do is you're going to say, listen, I know you're going to make an investment in me. I, I know Deloitte, you're going to make an investment. KPMG, you're going to make an investment. EY, you're going to make an PwC, you're going to make an investment in me. And I appreciate that investment you're going to make in me. But I want to show you the investment I've made in myself. I want to show you how serious I am about this career. I want to show you what I can do. You connect those two, humbleness understanding that they're going to invest in you, but more importantly, with confidence. But understand, I've invested in myself. I've worked really hard. I am connected with my students and colleagues. I've done these things. That removes, Nancy, the risk of hiring you. They now know you appreciate that opportunity, that you appreciate the investment in them. So that, and by the way, Nancy, then they're going to make serious money off of you. So, you know, it's an investment, but it comes back really fast. The other thing that you're going to learn, too, is Stacy can take you through. And also, it's something that I strongly, particularly for first-generation students, get your family involved in the conversation. Get your mom and dad involved in the conversation. Go to the Robert Half website and see what you can make in this business after two and three years. Bryce, most likely Bay Area, within three years, you're at 100000 105, 110000 Within six to seven years, you're, you're sitting at 180 to 220. Within 10 to 14 years, you're sitting north of 300 to 400. Make partner average earnings for the older part. I mean, like older, like 45. You're looking at 1.1 million. I mean, it's, it's, it's good money. People go into this business to grow. You, you work really hard, you grow. I shared earlier, We've got three children out of four that studied accountancy. None of them are in public accounting today. Two are practicing law. The other one is a high net worth um, financial planner. It just, it's where it can take you. It's the language of business. So please, Maggie, Ryan, Genio, Luciano, get out there. Get these applications started. Take some shots. Take some shots. Don't worry about the rejection. Again, we don't fit Remember I said we weren't a priority school. We didn't even have an account, accountancy program a few years back. Today, this little giant in La Jolla is waking up. And we're very confident of the talents that you bring every day. And our job is just to help you get that last bit of you know, competition seen by these firms out there. Great questions. Any other questions? Hey, Jim, um, I just have a question. Yes. So that would be the same salary for a CPA 
um, a, light, a certified CPA? No, maybe? great question. Almost all the firms today, even the, the super regionals and nationals, they'll give you a bonus, typically around $5,000 for passing of that exam. So that's an almost, I mean, right out of the block, you get 5,000 for passing that examination. If you look at my background and do connect with me through LinkedIn, you'll see I have a CPA, CMA, that's the managerial equivalent of the CPA. And I got something to call a CIPP as well, sort of in privacy and in large data usage. These certifications, it takes a little bit of time to study a little bit more, cost a little bit of money, not a lot of money to take an exam. Those those combinations have been worth to me tens of thousands of dollars per year over an entire lifetime. It's been worth comfortably in the hundreds of thousands to likely about seven figures of value in that period of time. So it's something worth definitely taking a look at. But yeah, CPA, you got to be all over. You got to know that. And the importance about it, too, is it starts cracking you into and seeing what's going on in this business. Again, super important to have. Thank you so much for the answer. Thank You're you very welcome. welcome. And by the way, all of you here would easily pass the exam. And I'm going to tell you why. Do I have anybody in this room, anybody in this chat that ever finished the bottom third of their grade school? I mean, we're talking like the lowest third of your class in grade school. Do I have anybody in this call that finished in the bottom third of your high school? Is anybody here in the bottom third at UCSD? No. You guys have always been in that upper quartile forever. Passing the CPA exam is basically about this. It's 70% ultimately pass this exam. There's 30, 35% that don't. It's the minimum requirement to enter into the profession. You will pass it. You won't necessarily pass it on the first try. That's not a problem. That's not an issue. But ultimately, all of you on here have more than enough capability and skill to pass that exam. Any other questions? Um, I just have one more question. Please. Um, thank you for the answer uh, for the salary one. Um, can we ask you a question regarding the application for the MPAC? Right yes, there? please. Well, oh. we, we really aren't geared towards that today, but my suggestion is, um, let me see if I can, let, let's see if I can, I'll tell you what we'll do is we, get, we know who you are. We'll send out some information afterwards where the application pointers are. But the best way to do is have a conversation with Stacy. You know, Stacy, that's, that's what she does. She sits down and really helps you kind of put together. And as much as I am, you know, very proud of what we're doing here at UCSD, it really is the concept of grad school versus not. It's just, it's, it's adding those extra initials. It's showing that extra little bit of, you know, attention around the importance of that, that growth mind, mindset. Uh, those are some of the importance on it. Got it. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. You're very welcome. Yeah, Stacy will be able to connect you with, with the where our flyer is and with the application process is. But I'll tell you what, the day you, you put down, I've been basically, I've done the junior application. I've been given provisional acceptance in the program. You feel it at that time. Your resume just goes up another, another notch or two, really. Uh, and the other thing that's kind of cool is we are on campus now. Come take a peek. See what's going on in, in these classrooms. You saw the LinkedIn snapshot. It really is kind of cool seeing everybody back in class. Any other questions? If not, we'll begin the wrap down. And I'm back. You're welcome. So, <laughs> <laughs> wow. You never know with technology. You always have to be prepared. Just keep trying. Don't give up. So after <laughs> panic, um, I'm back in. And that's just what you have to prepare for. So. Um, if you do have any questions, please email me directly. You should get a follow-up email after this event and with the link for the next event where you would be talking with me. I'm going to try to get an alumni there as well so you can ask some questions to them. And any other questions for now? Is that it? All right. Well, I look forward to meeting you all soon. Hopefully, get those applications done. It is open right now. And I look forward to getting to know each and every one of you. Have a great day, everyone. Have a wonderful day. Good luck on your, your fall and just go through the learning process. Bye now. Thanks, Jim. Thank you.